basically the purchase from the AW 2016 collection, which we showed in Florence for the Pitiomo Menswear Week. We focused it on the jacquard, which we had made at the Sven Mall factory. That was an exciting new process for us because we've never used it before, so it was the first time we did that. Cape Town doesn't really get into winter, and this was a winter collection. So we've learned before, you know, like we make it a collection, it's just heavy, dark, thick, and people can't wear it here really because it's too wintry. So we thought we'd make it a little bit lighter, more summery and fun. I started out by doing a luggage range, and then from there it went on to doing a menswear label. We had these separate lines where it was Adrian Cater's was the menswear label, basics wear, and then AKJP came about from Jody Paulson, who's an artist, who collaborated on the brand. From there, we did one collection together and it worked so well that we just kept going on and on and on and on. Basically, we outsource everything. We don't have anything in-house, except Naima, she came from outside of town, brought her into town, shared the studio with me, and then that helped her to grow her business with and people had better access to her. And then the leather works we normally do at Woodheads, which they help us, you know, like in meeting deadlines, like if we tell them we have a show, we have to have the sandals ready, like they always make it happen. But once you've got your structure going, then it's just, it's easy because you know exactly who to go to. The store came about from the joint of the two brands, and then we started to bring a collective in together, so we would have like younger designers and like a collective of designers in one store. Which I would move forward as a collective rather than each designer trying to move on their own, you know, like they we work together. In South Africa, they like to support and fund designers as a whole. And they don't necessarily like focus on two or three good designers and go like, cool, we're gonna focus on them for two years and help them and get their businesses going and make sure that everything is like on par, you know. There's been quite a good um, support from the local community with regards to local design. But cheaper, bigger entities and like bigger enterprises that sell cheaper fashion, they are the ones that are going to win because the people just want to have that style, that trend this season. They don't want to worry about it and they don't want to pay for it. Because the quality of the design, the style is good. But they don't understand that the quality of the actual garment is not going to... They'll catch on to it. Like I've heard people talking and they're like, oh, my thing just broke. But I don't know if it's going to stop them from buying it. People don't see it as an amazing thing here if a local fast fashion brand had to do it. But at the moment an international brand comes in with all the marketing and David Beckham on it or whatever, then they go crazy for it and they buy it. Yeah, it's like McDonald's coming, yeah. Everyone went crazy for it in the beginning and then they realized it's not good for you. Brainwash. <laughs> so basically being a South African designer, to me, feels like I'm very far away. But with new technology and brought us closer. Also people just have their eyes on Africa at the moment, so it's not such a bad place to be.